Okay, we live on there. We're getting ready to set up. We'll do a little recording for you. Let's get to the bench. I'm back. I'm the one and only. Matthew Jane Glasper Sr. Founder and organizer of King and Queen Ministry. And I'm also the organizer and founder of Holy Take Karate. And for people that have a problem with the word holy, I always say it to them, complete hand karate, which means exactly the same thing. The word holy means to be full. If I tell you to bring me a holy glass of water, I, all I said was fill a, fill a glass up to the rim. It has to be filled up completely to the rim. Then it's a holy glass of water. What do you mean? A whole, H-O-L-D, whole glass of water. That's how we say it. And taking everything out of content, we misunderstand a lot of things and cause us to miss our blessing and miss out. So I am the founder of Holy Take Karate, which come, consists of a 12-degree balance of teaching. And because it consists of a 12-degree balance of teaching, the belt max out at 12 degree black belt because you have to master 12 degree of balance of taking a man off balance whether you be throwing a kick or sweeping or side stepping but there's 12 you got 3 degrees in front of your feet you got 3 degrees on the inside of your feet you have 3 degrees on the outside of your feet for sweeping or just for setting the man up, getting off a kick. You have three degrees of balance behind the back of your feet for sweeping or sidestepping the angle to get off a kick or a punch. Judo teach eight. Hakido teach eight. Jujitsu teach eight. Only complete hand teach 12. Now, I have seen Kung Fu artists operate in 12, but if you go to them, I don't care what degree of master that they are, they cannot tell you and show you exactly where those 12s are. So if you don't know, then you're not operating in it. You have to be able to operate in it. Anything I do, I can tell you how to do it. Anything. Anything I have developed down through the years, I can teach it. What made me mad as a teenager when I would go to these superstar black belt and ask them questions, they would tell me they don't know. They already know they do such and such and thing, and this is how it came out. That's stupid. To me, that's stupid. So in other words, you good at something, but you can't teach it. I heard a man tell me, he says, uh, I said, how many kicks can you do? He says to me, uh, in a minute, I do about 150 or 200. So I says to them, you faster than that. So I says, I a 160 seconds. He says that's not possible. And the reason he said it, because he was a gym teacher. And the man that you know him as, the one and only, the great Bill Wallace. Yes, sir. So, if I'm trying to low grade Bill, no, I'm not trying to low grade Bill. That's 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 not that's not it. But the thing is, you should be able to teach. What you know. So if you can't teach it, never say to another student or a younger child or even the person that's older than you that it's not possible. Get rid of the word it's not possible. You shouldn't be in martial art if you think that age has something to do with a person's ability. If you think that just because you can't do it, and you've been in the martial art for 30 years and still cannot do it, 
That doesn't mean that it's not possible. You didn't put the time in that needs to be put in. That's all. Let's get this on work. Now, a lot of people like to use all type of heavy work, heavy this, heavy this, and heavy this. I like it once in a while to mess around. It's a good feeling. But you don't get a workout on just doing heavy. You got to go light enough where you can spend two or three hours just working out nonstop. You have to. Now, this is the trick. People that's getting into work, work out and lifting the free weight, let me explain this to you. If you start out with 50 pounds and you're doing curls, once your small muscles get tired, you don't have to put another uh, five pounds on there to try to go into the heavy. You know why? Because once your small muscles get tired, your heavy muscle takes over. It's the same as distant running. When your small muscle gets tired and distant running, your big power muscle take over and carry you the rest of the distance. All you have to do is just don't stop. It kicks in automatically. Your sixth sense take care of that for you. But if you never put yourself to that test, you'll never know these things. And if nobody never tell you and then have that knowledge and experience, you'll never know. When you could have been the best, you turned out to be the second best. Somebody just mess you up. Get a right training. We're going to do a little of this and a little of that. We're going to do a few crunches. This is the 25 plate. You don't need a heavy plate. This plate here will help you get an 8-pack. Notice I said an 8-pack, not a 6-pack, but an 8-pack. If you take time and look at your muscle, you'll find out there's 8, not 6. I don't know where people get 6-pack from. I guess that's where the, the belt lines stop on men's pants. A lot of them, they wear their clothes up on top of their stomach because they got a six-pack and not an eight. And if they drop the pants a little lower, they got a round circle down there. So I love the eight. So here we go. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like counting to myself instead of counting out loud. So if you want to count with me, that's up to you. But I will explain everything that I do and why I do as I switch up. I'm 47 years in this, doing this. I've been exercising actually longer than that. I've been exercising ever since I was four years old. But the only thing was that when I was four, I didn't call it exercising. I called it playing. So... As I got older, I was probably about 16 years old by the time I started calling it an exercise because I heard older people saying it. It was planned and just doing something. And so as I got older, I said, oh, wow, I've been exercising all these years. I've been trained to be a track star at four years old. At four years old, I ran every single day. I went practicing. Running while my brothers, all the brothers was at school. That's all I did all day long, run. When I got tired, I crawled underneath the house and went to sleep. When I woke back up, I went back out, drank some water, and went back to running. Oh! We're going to set this plate over here to the side. Now, I'm on a real old bow flex. I pray bow flex see this and send me some more belts. Or I can just simply order. But it would be nice if they just send them. Now, this machine gives me resistance up until 500 resistance. It depends on what you're doing. It does not give 500 resistance in everything that I do. It all depends on what I'm doing and how I'm doing and how do I crunch or crunch the belt to make use of the belt. So a lot of the technique that originally was given to me by the book design, I don't even use it because the type of muscle that I want to develop and the angle that I want to use for my style of fighting or my ability to stay in shape the way I want to be in shape it doesn't benefit me in the area, so I add my own and change. I always make changes to everything. If you teach me something, I'm going to add on to it. 
That's what made me who I am. Now, we're going to bend press a little. We have resistance belt here. This is normally equivalent to 50 pounds. Just one of them. I have two on. And I also have a 25, which is supposed to be equivalent to 25 pounds. But in certain positions, the belt is equivalent to 225 pounds when, when you bring both of them together. So most men, they push up, they hold, and they let back down. Push up, hold, and let back down. That's good for bodybuilding. I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm a fighter. So everything I do, I do fast. I'm not going to throw a right hand slow. I'm not going to throw a hook punch slow. But with accurate timing and speed. So when I train with resistant belt or free weight, I train fast. I push fast as I can, just like I'm throwing a punch. So we're going to go fast. We have a approximately, with the belt that I have, on here would give me up to like 250 resistance. But the difference, what I like about these belt, it's like a human on top of you, it's standing over your head, and you got 250 pounds in your hand, and they pushing that 250 pounds back into your face, and you got to push it back out. That's what I like about this belt. It's an extremely good machine for MMA. It gives you all the type of resistance that you need that an opponent gonna give you, but greater resistance which is your benefit to make a, easy, a hard fight an easy fight. Let's go. Yes. I can't get it right now. I'm recording. Goes into set that's 50. So we go right into the next set. There's no resting because when I'm fighting in the ring, I don't get a break. So I don't like to go to a gym where I got to get on a bench and it's 10 of us and we waiting in line to get our turn. I don't like that. So when I train my brothers and we've had our own bench in our house, one would be Everybody that's not on the bench, you doing push up until your turn to get on the bench. Everybody, when you get there, you already tired. You got to work. You're not gonna stand there and wait, wait till your turn to get on the bench. You're gonna do push up until they so you time for you to get on the bench. Let's go. Now, the way I have the belt crunch, it would not allow me to extend my arm fully out because I have too high resistance on the, on the machine. Now, if I take the fit this off, then I can extend it all the way out. But this 50 belt that, I, that will actually be used in curling, leg curling, is equivalent to 500 pound resistance. So it's not made to extend out. If, you act, if I could extend it out, push it all the way out, which I can, I would pop the belt in half because it's not made to go that far. Now, when I'm throwing a punch, I never extend or lock my elbow. Now, in form, cutters, sure, yeah, we locking our elbow. They teach you to lock it. And show where it goes you now. Now, type one though does not teach you to lock your elbow. It does not. If you don't believe me, go to someone that actually know type one though. Not somebody that says they might know type one though, because I know a lot of people that have on their regimen that they are blacked up in type one though. And I can tell you from experience, from the years of knowing them, they just lie to make themselves look good. I won't give them no name, but. They are not a black weapon taekwondo. 
They might have a Taekwondo instructor now, but he have not taught them <laughs> Taekwondo. But a lot of us, we want to be something that we're not. Because if you had all that, it was showing your your fighting ability. I'm just saying. Now, once my arm get tired, my larger muscle gonna kick in and take over. So if I stop, soon as my muscle get tired. They never get, give a chance to kick in. So what I'm saying to you, you is able to do more than what you think that you are able to do. Let me say it again. You are able to do more than what you think that you are able to do. Because you don't understand your muscles, you don't understand how they work, you think that once you feel start feeling fatigued, that you need to change and do something else, or you need to stop. And rest. No, go. Keep going. Keep going. Your larger muscle going to take over and give you that extra strength to go on. Now, normally what bodybuilders does, they start. They'll start out with get them a little warm up with a lighter weight. Then it goes into the heavy weight. Okay. Now, when you see a a big mega muscle person, most of the, all he have is a great body or built or energy built in the larger muscle area. The small muscle is completely undeveloped. That's unhealthy. Bodybuilding. That's unhealthy. Now, but like I say, they bodybuild. They're not fighters. And it's a it's unwise to go to a bodybuilder to build for strength. You need to build for speed. If you're a fighter, you need to build for speed. Go somewhere, let somebody give you plenty of cardio work. You don't need to build for no muscle. You need to build for speed. As you're building for speed, muscle is built. But the good part about it, you build them faster and you build more, and they have the reaction. You train them to react faster. And because they react faster and accurately, you become a more dangerous fighter, more dangerous MMA, more dangerous all mixed martial artists all the way around. Because now you're not thinking, you're reacting. Which is beyond three zero decimal point one of a second. Which is faster than the recording of a man's eyes back into his brain. So when he realized what you're doing, the fight is over. Now, my the smaller muscle have gotten tired, but I'm going to go over a few more sets because I know that my larger muscle is going to take over. Now that's when a, a man is dangerous in the boxing ring, he's tired, and a lot of guys runs in there and they get knocked out and they like, how? He was tired. Small muscle, yes, was tired. Large muscle, no, they was not tired because he had not used them yet. Okay, we're going to switch up a little here. Hopefully my computer hasn't went off on me. We're going up a little higher here. up over our head. We're going to put it down. Working the upper shoulder muscles. Resisting is equivalent to 200 pounds. 
as I pull the resistance belt pull back. Unlike free weight, if I have free weight over my head, head, it would just be sitting there, sitting there, and only the pressure would be coming downward. But resistance belt, as I'm pulling down, the exact same amount of pressure, pulling back up, trying to go the opposite direction. It's just like a you're trying to put a chokehold in an MMA match, an ultimate fighting match, and the man is trying to stop you. He's attacking with either the same amount of pressure or close to it, depending on which one of you is the strongest, and trying to prevent you from locking him. This is the exact same thing this machine is doing to me. But I don't pull and hold everything I do fast. And to tie out my smaller muscle so my larger muscle kicks in and takes over. While my larger muscle is working, my smaller muscle is resting. That's why it's important to have a good cardio energy level so you can keep going. You're not tired. You just need to allow your muscle to take over. The other muscle keep going. But if you listen to your brain saying you're tired, it'll shut your whole body down. Once your, your brain shut down, the rest of the body goes down. But if you notice, and your brain know that you notice, it just change over. Just like a computer. It just change right over and keep on going. Now, as you goes up in depth, according to how much you weigh, you might have to put a weight or something on the floor to put your feet under in order to hold your body down. So I'm going to give 190, and this is like 250, and so when I pull on it, my body to some degree comes up off the bench, so I have to try to lock my feet into the underneath the bench to prevent from going up in order to get the drill that I really want out of it. Water time. Drink your water. Keep some water around when you're working out. Never work out without water. If you're doing a 15 minute workout, sure, you can wait to the end of it. If you're working out 20, I mean 30, two hours, three hours like I do, five days a week, keep some water work on around. Or you setting yourself up for a serious brain damage. Or serious knee, serious hip replacement because of no water. And make sure you take your multiple vitamins. Be faithful in your life. Care more about yourself. Don't tell somebody, let somebody tell you, well, you need to care more about me. <laughs> no, take care of yourself. When you take care of yourself, you can reach down always pick them up. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't reach down and pick nobody up because you can't even pick up yourself. A lot of people make good quotes, sounds good, but the people that quoted it, they never lived it. So you got a lot of us that quote something that sounds good, and the person that they got it from never lived it, and they think it's true, and it's the biggest lie in the world. Let's do one more set, and we're going to call this today. And this is just for you, and you keep going. On and on. You keep going. And I'll be back later to give a whole nother drill using the same machine. Well, I am the one and only Matthew Jane Glasper, Senior. Founder and organizer of Holy Tate Karate, 12th degree. Now, where I am known on YouTube and across the world now as the fastest kicking human for the most kick at one time without putting his feet on the ground. 115 seconds. That's the record YouTube know. But that is not the true record that I have done it in. 
I did it on my right side, which was my slower side, because the camera could not record my left side because I was kicking too fast. And I'm going to prove it to you that I did it because I got a better camera that can record me now. What I didn't have and couldn't afford, I can afford it now. I will prove it that my left side is twice as fast as, as my right. You know what that means? You're going to have to record me at at least seven seconds and a hundred kicks. And guess what? I'm just telling you. I am the one and only created by God. Didn't call myself, didn't make myself. But I just realized who I am in him. Y'all take care. Drink your water. Talk to you later. We are turning off.